Welcome to episode 25 of the Painting Experience podcast. On the podcast, founder Stuart Cubley explores the potential of the emerging field of process arts and shares inspiration from his ongoing workshops and retreats. Today, you'll hear a conversation between Stuart and Zen priest and teacher Rinzan Pachovnik as they explore the crossing points between process painting and meditative practice in preparation for an upcoming workshop they'll be leading together. Welcome, Rinzan. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today and especially to this workshop that we're going to be hosting together and teaching together. This is very new for me to do something like this and partner with a person who has a discipline and long experience with that discipline outside of the painting process. So I'm quite excited about it. I think we're going to be making inroads into new ground together. As a way of introducing you, maybe you can say just a little bit about who you are and your own experience with Zazen. Yes, my name is uh, Rinzan Petrovna, and I am an ordained Rinzai priest, and my home temple is uh, Choboji up in Seattle, and I uh, train under Kenjo Marinella Osho. And here in Portland, I run my own temple, No Rank Zendo. I'm also a psychotherapist working in private practice here in Portland. The two developed almost hand-in-hand uh, for about 13 years, uh, a little bit more longer with the Zen practice than being a psychotherapist. We've known each other for several years now, and I know that I felt an immediate connection and affinity with you, and, and you said the same with me, and I always wondered how our paths would cross, and they, they haven't seemed to cross much, but they seem to be crossing now more dramatically. They've crossed in terms of me attending retreats, so I'm looking uh, very forward to it. My first exposure to the painting experience, well, one, I followed my wife, Anne, who had already done a retreat or two with you. And I could see the benefit that it was having for her, and I became incredibly curious. And so I did a retreat at Still Meadow with you. And that's after having had a uh, background in studio arts. Back in my younger days, I was a studio arts major in, uh, in college. And, and throughout my teenage years, I was totally studio arts. I was going to be an artist. And after my freshman year, something just like a wall came up and I stopped entirely, gave away all my materials. Everyone thought, what's he doing? And I don't know. I didn't know what that wall was, but I come to uh, Still Meadow to work with you and I'm looking at the blank page and I was right back 20 some years earlier at the easel when I was a 20 year old freshman. I found that what I had left was waiting for me. What I had not processed was still waiting for me. And I found all those judgmental voices. You know, is this good? Is this bad? What are people going to think? Is it going to make me famous? Are people going to be attracted to me when I do this? Are they going to think I'm cool? Boy, all those 20-year-old uh, concerns were, were right there on the surface again. I was quite certain they were going to say, you know, you've overworked this. You, know, you, you might want to, you went too far. And one of the things that I love is that you cannot go too far. And I remember the first night uh, going back and doing Zazen uh, back in my room and just having this light go off. It's like, this is the same thing. This is exactly the same thing as I was sitting in open experience in Zazen. It's the same thing as sitting in open experience and watching. That's beautiful, Renzan. There's some writing from the Zen tradition that actually was very meaningful to me early on when I was a young man and way before I started painting, way before I uh, was teaching, it went right to the core and gave me a lot of insight into what was my own meditation practice. So I'd like to read it this morning. It's actually an excerpt from the Trust in the Heart Sutra by the third Chinese patriarch of Zen. To live in the great way is neither easy nor difficult. Indeed, it is due to our choosing to acquire or reject that we do not see the true nature of things. If there is even a trace of this and that, of right and wrong, the mind essence is lost in confusion. When the mind exists undisturbed in the way, Nothing in the world can offend. And when a thing can no longer offend, it ceases to exist in the old way. 
The great way is perfect, like vast space, where nothing is lacking and nothing is in excess. Just let things be in their own way, and there will be neither coming nor going. I love that. And that's, that is exactly the, um, the excitement that I have about the, the painting experience and its conjunction with uh, Zen practice is our small mind starts to pick and choose what is right and what's wrong. And I would even say that some people approach not just Zen practice, but for many spiritual practices, hoping to get rid of how do I get rid of my pain? How do I get rid of this? And how do I get rid of that? And we can get stuck trying to pick and choose. And like, well, that wouldn't be holy. That's not sacred. I wouldn't want that. You know, that seems impure. Isn't this about purity? Isn't this about clarifying and enlightening and ending all these? Not at all. It's about opening up, not picking or choosing, but just being receptive to all of this life energy as it flows. And as I've participated in the painting experience, it's been nothing but that. It's almost in the painting experience as you come the first night, you have this vast space. <laughs> <laughs> and then what is going to come and what's going to present itself. And as the workshop continues, one's ability, I certainly know that my ability to let myself express itself into that space expands and expands and expands. And I'm left with nothing but the requirement that I stay present and accepting and curious about what is this? You know, what, what is this? And that's the, um, there's two fundamental Zen koans. What is this and who am I? And that's definitely what's being explored in the painting experience. Yeah, I just feel like the foundational exploration that goes on in the painting experience is something I recognized as a valid spiritual practice early on. And the more I did it, the more I began to recognize that there was something transformational happening in the experience of expressing yourself spontaneously and that many of these points that are made in the trust in the heart sutra are actually taking place in the painting process so i'm thinking of the first paragraph to do to our choosing to acquire or reject that we do not see the true nature of things well in that space that's opened up in front of the white piece of paper that becomes very obvious when we try to acquire or we try to reject and the consequences of that. In other words, how that shuts down the space. Yeah. If there's even a trace of this and that, of right and wrong, the mind essence will be lost in confusion. That's totally experienced by someone who's painting. I love this part about when the mind exists undisturbed in the way, nothing in the world can offend. And when a thing can no longer offend, it ceases to exist in the old way. We get offended personally. We get offended when we take things personally. So it seems to me this is a pretty clear way of saying you have to go beyond yourself. You have to not take something personally. You have to not identify with the content. And this is what happens when someone does identify with the content of the painting, which is good painting, good person, bad painting, bad person. As soon as we do that, we lose the way. We're lost again in mind confusion. Just let things be in their own way, and there will be neither coming nor going. I think so much about the completion of the painting process where you have to let it go its own way. The whole painting, you have to let it go its own way. But we get mixed up with coming and going. We try to make it go a particular way or make it not go a particular way. And the completion of the painting is when we finally just let it be what it is. Then we enter a state which is really a transformational state where there's neither coming nor going. Often that sutra is translated as faith and mind, and that's shin in uh, Chinese, which means heart mind, the faith in the heart or faith in the way, faith in the Tao. And boy, I'm loving the way that you're describing it. I always, I like our exchanges as I'm doing it because you'll say, well, what do you see there? And I'm like, 
you know, well, I kind of see this. And there's a kind of like, well, gosh, you wouldn't want to do that. It would be breaking the rules. Or you might be embarrassed if you actually paint this. So as I'm painting, sometimes it's like, oh, goodness, this is what's coming next. <laughs> and do you have the courage to express that? Zen practice, one of our core practices, is going a long retreat in Sashin. And very often people are like, okay, I'm going to go to Sashin and I'm going to work on this or, you know, I'm going to have this clarification. And we have this idea of what's going to happen in this experience. And you sit for a day, you sit for two days, and then suddenly you realize the way is going somewhere that you're not picking or choosing. And that what is coming up is something not of your picking or choosing. And you're, oh my goodness, this is coming up in me. What does this mean? And we're exposed to ourself in that process. Just in the painting experience, we're exposed to ourself through this mirror of the painting. And you're left with nothing but to hopefully eventually go, yep, that's just part of the landscape. There's a disidentification with it. So the mind is no longer disturbed by reality. And what happens is a great space opens up. And there is a, often there's a fear, like, if I paint violent images, won't that make me a violent person? Well, guess what? It's all in there. <laughs> it's in there anyway. So face it, look at it, be aware of it. And what happens is you're no longer attached to it. And then you're no longer disturbed by it. And you're no longer controlled by it anymore. In fact, eventually it gets to the point where there's no you. But it's simply this. It's just this. And we don't have to get caught up in coming and going, exactly as you said. That's wonderful, Renzan. I really like that very much. This whole concept of not doing, which feels so central to the Zen practice as well, not doing, being in the space without acting unconsciously, is very, very powerful and certainly one that comes up in the painting experience. And I think it becomes an interesting question then about What's the difference between acting spontaneously and expressing oneself spontaneously without mind interference versus acting unconsciously and reflexively in a way that's not helpful? Very interesting discussion. Anything goes in. Well, this is great. I get to debauch. I get to drink beer. I get to have sex whenever I want. Oh, this is wonderful because it's just the way. And Shunryu Suzuki has a great dialogue with somebody who is saying, you know, when I drink beer, I'm a beer-drinking Buddha. And Shunryu says, if you were a beer-drinking Buddha, you wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and so th that touches exactly on what you're talking about. But there's a different quality when there's a spontaneity and when we're just caught in our primitive, uh, reactive qualities, that there's a cleansing that takes place, I would say, but a spaciousness that this practice cultivates and develops. There's the pristine quality. In it. And you can feel it walking into a zendo. You can feel a depth of concentration, uh, which would be called samadhi. And you can feel samadhi walking into the painting experience as well. You walk into that room, and there's an energy that's been cultivated in that room. And you can feel it, and you can see it in people. And so when we create these opportunities, either through Zen practice or through painting experience, to go more deeply, we have this, this much richer, fuller experience, fewer hooks, greater space, more flexibility, more spontaneity. I'm really excited about this weekend that we're doing together. This is our inaugural weekend. It feels to me like a wonderful way in which to characterize and hold both of these disciplines, painting process and Zen practice, and realizing that they both are pointing at the same thing. And our endeavor here is to integrate the two in one experience. We'll have periods of time in which we're painting, and we'll have periods of time in which we're sitting, and we'll have times to have Dharma talks and discussions. And I have a feeling it's going to be quite interesting. And that the integration will be very fertile. I'm looking forward to this very much. Stuart and Rinzon's workshop, Process Painting and Zen Practice, will be held from November 11th through the 13th at the Still Meadow Retreat Center near Portland, Oregon. You can learn more by visiting our website at www.processarts.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we hope you'll share it with a friend. The theme music for our podcast comes from Stefan Jacob. We thank you for listening and hope you'll join us again soon.